singular way, through one way, and that's through the threat of a new surveillance to solve any of those problems. Right? Versus a plurality uh, of non-violence solutions. It's more than the solutions. threat of violence, because they only have to use the threat of violence against a... Well, not in America, they use it against a lot of people, because we have so many people locked up. But usually it's through propaganda, through, you know, once you're an infant to where you're older, and so then you impose the morals of your society onto the child, and then generally people follow those. Yeah, it's, it's, it becomes uh, easier to accept it. Like Stalin was saying, look, how can I get them to accept communism? Give me like one generation you know, of, of children to put them through our schools and indoctrination camps, and then they'll come out churning communism. And uh, like right. at one point, the, uh, the national anthem here, right, the Pledge of Allegiance was a Hell Hitler salute. Right here. Yes. Oh wow. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. In Richmond. Uh, in the United States. Oh uh, well, I guess Richmond was the capital. And here, of the and here as well. So, so was, all over the country. That was a thing. So right, the schools are a very good place to indoctrinate the young to kind of accept what you're saying. There's kind of a dogmatism of that kind of propaganda. Great place right. to start, right? Um, yeah. Because you control. But, the I mean, some of that is good though. Like the don't kill people. I know I keep on bringing back the yeah. don't kill people, but. I don't know, it's kind of Well, I mean, it's not, uh, or so if government consider that to be uh, good then, right, as a virtue, don't kill people, then they wouldn't back that by threatening to kill you if you did not, Yeah, that's right? true. Yeah. I agree with that. <laughs> so at that point, I was like, well, yeah. then you don't really value that, because you have to universalize that, right? Don't kill people means not just don't kill people here or over there, but yeah. at all time, at all place, in the future, now, in the past, it's wrong right. to kill Ideally, people. Ideally, though, the government would reflect the values of the people and then not do those types of things. But but it's founded first on making that threat. Like, uh, like the police, for example. They say, like, we're here to protect you, but first they must rob you of your property, right, through taxes. And then they say, now we, we can protect your property, right? So that kind of uh, logical conclusion then doesn't... Uh, you can't derive from that that they're here then to protect their property or must That's provide true, security. But you couldn't have like a modern economic system to the degree that we have without some form of enforcement. Uh, markets do a lot of or so regulations then, right? Yeah. How do we regulate? So markets do a lot of great uh, job and uh, of regulation. The person who regulates whether a business is going to succeed or fail, whether they're going to have profit or loss, mm -hmm. is the consumer. Right? Yeah, but when you deregulate, you have things like the 2008 bank crash and, who, and stuff right, like and that. Then, and of course, uh, and who bailed out these businesses? Yeah, the government the did. Government the problem, did. And, and they did, right? because if they didn't, and I mean, I don't like the banks at all, but right. if they didn't, the, the ramifications for everyday people would have been even worse based on Don't you how think it would affect you. the billions of dollars that they gave to these banks instead, uh, wouldn't it better to be handing out to all of us? Oh yeah, maybe? definitely. Right? They yeah. should have paid off the people, not the banks. <laughs> but even that is a form of the government paying people rather than, you know, the government doing nothing. But that's not the market. That's the government uh, but that's bailing the government out businesses. Fixing things. Right, like, that's not the government fixing anything. The, the, the idea that markets generally lead towards, like, equality yeah. is, has been proven by our society not when? to be true because then when people get on top yeah. they then start rewriting the rules so that they stay on top. How do top they rewrite the rules? By uh, through things like um, the uh, oh I can't remember the name but the act that allows you now to give unlimited amount of funding to campaigns. How do they, what, and, so that's uh, legislation then right? Right. So through government so that's not a market that's government. Right, but... Okay, and that has nothing to do with the market. That's going through the government armed okay. forces of the guns to enforce those rules. So, but if there's no in enforcement, then what's to stop a private corporation from buying a massive uh, private law force that would then enforce the, the, the corporation's views upon the people in the surrounding area and things? Okay. And basically become like a warlord. All right, so I mean, uh, we always say we have warlords today, right? You have people right. that can tell you what you can, cannot do, with your body, with your land, remnant domain, taxes, all kinds of stuff, right? We, we live today under warlords. But now, without government, all a corporation is is a piece of paper backed and enforced by government to allow CEOs limited liability, right? So immunity from their own actions, the same immunity that state prosecutors grant themselves, the judges grant themselves, the politicians grant themselves, right? So without government then, there's no such thing as a corporation. You don't have this vast, You can enormous, still have a vast organization. You, you, you could say, yeah, you could say even organization. Even without a government. You could say business, sure. Now, the thing is, there was a point in time, so you're saying like, what if there was a large 
uh, organization of security, that they will take over lands, right? Yeah, they now, will create their own government, basically. So what if I were to tell you that such a thing did exist here in the United States? That there was such an organization that had employed a large number of armed security that um, that made the United States government uh, in terms of insignificant. Such a large amount and of their Oh yeah, there's already tons you know who of that was? private who? The Pinkertons. Yeah. Right? So the Pinkertons. Now, now what point of history did, did you recall the Pinkertons conquering cities and conquering nations and de devastating whole towns? Well, they, they controlled people into almost the never. sort of slave-like situations. And then How did, when, wait, people, wait, wait, when well, people striked, they then brought in those private armies to shoot and kill them. All right, so the strike is a good one. All right, so who initiated force there? And the, the Pinkertons. No, no, because you're, what you're talking about specifically right. is a strike that occurred out in West Virginia. Now, what occurred there, uh, in terms of the facts there, there are people who wanted to continue to work. There was unions who said, no, we don't want you to work. So they took over that land. If I came over and took over your house, that's invasion, that's trespassing, right? They wanted a better deal for their work. You could do a better so deal. They you, could, you could do that, but you don't do that by aggressing. You don't do that. If I want to negotiate with you, right, if we're having problems, I don't do that by coming, kicking down your door and taking over your house and kicking you out. Well, right? that's not what happened. That is what happened. It's, it's, no, no, it's, no. It's if, if, they, if you want to do the house analogy, it's, it's a then property. They're the people that are working the house, they're the people that built the house, they're the people that cook the food. They're the people that do the laundry, and then one day they say, "Hey, we're getting paid like slaves. I want to get paid more." So they s like sit on their job. They're getting paid like slaves. So was it. there a gun pointed at them to work there? Did they, they point? In guns? many, in some cases, no, 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 no. Sort of. Facts and facts. That's sort of. Was there a gun pointed at these people to march in there and work? There was a gun pointed at them to not unionize. There was no gun. I mean, I, I'm asking. They, they specific, brought in people. Gun? No, no. Was there a gun pointed at them, answer this question, for them to march inside there and to work? No. No, okay. But they right, had so to no, feed no, their no. family. No, no, no. So there wasn't. So it's great. But it great. wasn't. No, no. It so, was, okay. All right. So okay. it's great that they, they want to feed their family. It's great that here comes an opportunity to someone coming out of nowhere, in the middle of nowhere out here in West Virginia, to provide an incentive. No one else is hiring you. No one else is giving you money. I'm going to come here and provide resources to okay. provide that's, you money to feed your example. family, right? So I think that's great. Yeah. And it's great. Yeah. But then what happens is once the corporations, and this happens all the time in, in third world nations, is they'll come in and they'll, and they'll say, oh, we're going to create all these jobs and everything will be great. And people go, yay, uh, capitalism and stuff. So the government will come in, they'll provide jobs, they'll put out services, but then once they've bought up everything, they have no reason to supply good services, good anything, because Why? people then have to work or else they'll die because they don't have the money or any way to they're, they're the they have a, a um, monopoly on the whole area so you have to do what they want basically and if you try to unionize that's when like people like the Pinkertons would re bring in you know the the private militaries to break up the union it wasn't so much to break up the union it was to take back the land that they were stealing Okay. There were people, now this is what occurred factually, there were people who did not want to be part of the union, but the union was coercing them and forcing them to do so as well, and such that they have families and children that they want to feed and they don't care about the union. All they care is going in there and going to work. The union robbed them of that opportunity, led their children to starve by stopping the whole thing altogether, by running into that place, shutting it down and taking it over. So now, the people, all, okay. now, now the oh, people yeah. who, who do want to work can't. Now their children are starving. This thing that they want to prevent has occurred because the unit come in and shut it all down. Now they have stolen this land and holding it by force, initiating force. What happens next then, of course, would happen to anyone. If someone were to initiate force and take something from you, you seek to get it back. That's where the Pinkertons came in that they hired to come and try to take it. But they never reached it. They never reached the uh, the area because the unions threw dynamites at them as they were fording up the river and they led to a little uh, shootout that began from there. But the first people who initiated force first there were the union members. The Pinkertons never even reached them. So you're saying that unions who... So if, if a group of workers that creates the area works in the area and does everything in the area, but they all owe allegiance to one person or a small group of people, and then they are paid very little, a very small amount of the value that they create uh, as workers, 
and then they collectively say that we want a better deal. So that. they take over. So not take it over violently. That's not their. That's not their. You property. think that it's it immoral for workers to uh, strike in the ways that we did? Because you know that these sorts of what you would consider violent strikes are the reasons we have a two-day weekend. No, 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 wrong, wrong, wrong. The unions had nothing to do with that. The two-day weekend? Right, yeah, absolutely. The person who kind of pushed forward all this stuff were, were businesses like uh, Henry Ford going out there producing businesses, higher wages than any of its competitors. I mean, Henry Ford was also a Nazi it, that yeah, sold Yeah, and we could say union workers murdered a lot of people. We could say a lot of negative things about the history of the world. Well, but well, no, no, let me show you facts. Well, okay. We're moving okay. aside, right? We're asking where did this come from? And I said that it's wrong. Okay. But I'm saying okay. factually what had occurred was that the market was producing a lot of these improvements in the environment, improvements in terms of two-day weekends. The market was shorting the hours. The reason they were paying them more, and the reason why is because they wanted to compete against the other automobile industries in order to retain their workers. For example, the reason why Henry Ford provided these incentives is because turnover rate was really high. It's a very monotonous, boring okay. job. And then so by paying them more, the productivity increased, their happiness increased, and then they were able to produce a lot cheaper cars that were successful okay. to a lot of the so people out there. But that's okay. but that's that's one area. But what I'm trying to say is the market's replete with many examples of businesses pushing forward these ideas first. After it became the norm, that's when the unions came in to codify what the market already created. They didn't create this in the first place. They didn't create the two-day right. weekend. No. I thought that was something no. they bargained for. No, no. They came in what was already existing in the marketplace. And of course, no one's going to go up against it because that's already the norm in the marketplace. Like child labor laws, right? So, uh, that so was The market already ended that practice. Okay, so what you're saying was uh, companies gave two-day weekends yes. due to that and then unions then created that as a law. Right, they could have pushed for that to be a law. Not that, so not then, that push. There's no resistance. Why would they resist something that was already occurring? The marketplace was already accepting this, and the marketplace already said, "Yeah, this is a norm. We want to compete, so everyone should have this." The union came in. That's why there's no resistance. Yeah, go ahead and codify. No one's going to go against something that's already happening. And then what they do then is pretty much cheat the actual real people who produce that out of uh, recognition. Okay, so. If you want to go with like the people dispersing into areas and then the number of workers then, you know, through the capitalist, uh, uh, sorry, um, through the number of people in an area and then how they can bargain with people that are businesses. Uh, the problem with that though is if when people jobs then are going to places like China now. I, I'm sorry, I did no, a lot no, no, of words no, no. I mean, that's, that's good. That's, just yeah, now, yeah. but so because of that market and, you know, businesses in America then also having branches in China and doing things to avoid taxes and et cetera, et cetera, uh, a lot of jobs go elsewhere to the lowest paying area. And there's a lot more people than there are well paying jobs. So if, if you, you know, get rid of all of that regulation, then you reach a level where a very few people have a lot of money and then everybody else has very little. Like in terms of outsourcing, I mean, there's nothing wrong with like, like trying to like set up sweatshops in other places, uh, other areas of uh, yeah. production. I mean, that's because the consumers here demand lower prices. Unless they want to pay like an extra $200 for like your next MacBook, that's why they outsource it to China. I'm fine with that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy yeah. to spend yeah, of $5 course, of course, to of course. have. And that's, that's, and that's fine. But, uh, everyone else is not fine. Everyone else wants, wants it cheaper and cheaper. I mean, CEOs don't really want to have to uproot everything, unpackage, and go somewhere else and set up all over again. I mean, they, whatever do they, they get money. Um, yeah, they do if it's profitable. They get a bonus. They have, it has to be profitable. Unless yeah. if they have a loss, of then course. the whole thing it's collapses. It's profitable right? to pay people less, yes. Uh, I mean, it, everybody profits in that. I mean, otherwise not, they don't Not exchange. the workers here do. Uh, yeah. The workers, I mean, there's a lot of different job areas in which they can go. I mean, it's not like you're saying like they don't make, are you saying like you think that they make like less than minimum wage working this sort of stuff? Because only less than the five. The people in China make a w way below minimum wage. You know what? The, people, the people in China people. working a lot of these uh, sweatshops, for example, uh, actually make a higher than all the other regular jobs in terms of like national average and what they would get paid. Uh, an enormous amount compared to all the other jobs that is found available in those other regions. I don't know about that. It is, a, it is true. I it's also a know this that happens. there's a lot of issues with hazards and safety and things like that. Right, and you know what, and if you went to those places, like in South America, some from Bolivia, so you could go to these places, so you can ask them, hey, would you, uh, 
either um, have more pay or less pay or an improvement of the work environment conditions. They say, no, fuck okay. no, I want, I want my pay. Okay. Yeah. Right. So basically the, what I'm just trying to say is the government can often be used as a tool against, um, against corporations, which basically are their own governments once they get big enough, except they, they don't have any voting, the, the, except for the shareholders. But the, the people at the top control everything. And then they come in, and they, you know, control areas and things. And you say, oh, but then, it, it, you know, it's it's violent for the workers to strike against that. But the the imbalance in wealth that that creates is almost a form of violence in that it creates uh, an inequality that forces a lot of people into a, a very low living standard, and then while others reap the benefits of their you know, work. The uh, the low standards they're talking about. Uh, the poor here that's considered poor, over 90% of them have a refrigerator. Over 90% oh, of them have a just, microwave. Oh, I'm not talking about just here. I'm talking about AC, everywhere people AC, in Venezuela. And, yeah, yeah, uh, in, in Venezuela. So here, the poor is considered rich in terms of luxury versus, I would say, like the poor, like Bolivia, right. that I've seen, uh, in, incomparable, right? Yeah, I don't and see so, that. so, like, for yeah. example, these are a lot of interesting luxuries that the poor have that the richest person, okay. like, over 150 years ago, uh, didn't have at all. Yeah, Did that's not true. Exist, that's true. Right? So we live a lot more in a the better standard luxury. standard of right? living But that didn't up. come through, cap through a government. That came through capital investment of saving and taking risks as an entrepreneur. Not everything's going to re reap any kind of a reward of failures and yeah. a lot of tries, a lot of ways to try to meet consumer I'm sorry demand. If I'm taking oh no, no, you're good. No, no, this is perfect. It's okay. Yeah, it's yeah, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But the thing is, what I'm saying is, what should be examined then? Why do we not have? You're talking about like a living wage. Then let's examine what is first okay. robbing us of a living wage, and you'll find that when you add up your local, city, state. Federal income tax, withholding tax, sales tax, everything you've bought has been taxed. Licenses uh, and permits discriminate against the educated poor from competing in the market. It costs like 130 hours, and like in Tennessee, training hours just to wash hair. Just to have the freedom to wash someone's hair for, to make an economic living. Okay. And that's government. So that's not a corporation. That's not a McDonald's tax. That is a government tax. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's tons of things wrong with the government, but there's see, corporations, their main goal is to make a profit. And if you want to do immoral things to your workers or to people in an area, then they would, if not restricted by rules created by the government. And it, you said that the government hasn't brought us any of like the refrigerator or yeah, anything doesn't. like that. Yeah. The space program, the first computers, all of that was through government funding. Because nobody's going to buy a massive. Was there room was there was there really such a market demand for people to go to the moon? I mean, all that masses amounts of billions of dollars. Just to go on a, 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 a dirt rock up there in, in the sky was such yeah, a big need. a ton of advancements what? that we for, experience today. Okay, so these these advancements are saying. So you're saying, for example, do you like GPS? Like, uh, do you like do you like do you like being able to fly? Do you like flight? Flying is right. Fun. The market created that. Yeah. You, right. That wasn't government. But, but did you know that computers weren't made by the market? Oh, so who, where, where, where did computers come from? They were created by inventors and things, but inventors, nobody, not, not government nobody, inventors. No, but yeah, no. nobody's the in market the market inventors. is going to buy a massive room-sized computer that's going to do very little. He, he would. You would. There we go. Okay. Uh, sure. right. <laughs> you want to come in? Yeah, I was, I was going to make a suggestion. I think I, think I just want to suggest. I think I come in, you, come in, come in. I think okay. I see you two just kind of talking past each other. Okay. And I was curious about if you wanted to come back to that or what you thought about the claim that it initially started with okay because it sounds like you're raising a lot of concerns about how things or you have a list of things you'd like to see in the world and you'd like to see them get done and you have concerns about how they would get done without government and you have concerns about things you don't want to see happen and you're wondering how would those how would we avoid those without government okay right yeah Isn't that kind of your but that's true yeah. those are different questions than the claim or the question is government immoral or would you say those are the same question um, to to some degree in that if if the government did immoral things to stop more immoral things from happening so if um, if people so the government stops people from killing other people. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry if I'm taking up no, too good, much time. No, you're good. You're good. This is why okay. we're here. Yeah. Okay. If the government went around, if sorry, not the government. I mean, the government does send people out to mm -hmm. kill people, but we'll get. Uh, if there's a group of people that want to seize power and enslave a, a like a village or something, 
the government can then inflict violence upon those people to stop them from committing immoral acts. So right. sometimes immoral acts can stop other greater immoral acts. That's my only thing about that, is that if, it's, if the government isn't there, then what's to stop people with power from inflicting slavery and, thing, and feudalism onto yeah. people no, just living around? I understand the question, and that falls into that first set of questions that I said, where you're, one, you're very curious about how do we avoid things we wanted to avoid without yeah, government? That's yeah, what you just basically, said. Yeah. And then I said, well, well, what about that first question? Is government immoral? Immoral. And then you said, well, yeah, it's immoral. Well, it's, it's, way to it's to immoral. It's immoral, yes. It's immoral. Yeah. But sometimes it has to be to stop greater immoral things, like slavery and stuff like that. Like, the, the slavery is a great example, because that's something that is historic right to hear, is that half of the country wanted to have slavery and they said they had arguments that are like well since we own people we'll treat them better than if we rent them and pay them uh, like a daily wage and they had all these things like that but um, then the North basically imposed you know the 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 freedom of slavery upon the South I mean not the freedom they, they got rid of slavery they and it well they did a there was no slavery existing in the North, so that wasn't true for them. In the North, that's yeah. true, that's so true. But they, the government ended slavery basically in the term of, unless if you're in jail, then you can still be slaved. slavery, right? Slaved, I think but, that's like the 21st Amendment. Yeah. Right? So but in, in, in general, they stopped the cotton farm slavery type so stuff. So you say like it took a war, is, government involvement, a war to end slavery. How else did the rest of the world end slavery? It wasn't through war. It no. wasn't through a bloody civil war or killing and maiming of thousands and thousands of so, children and families. So you would want to let the South secede and then let Close over the, the years them eventually oh, end? I'm not saying that at all. So then yeah. what would you want the government to do that in that there case? There have been no government to begin with to have created these conditions, right? The way that like England and the slavery there was buying their freedom. They pa passing the moral argument for the first place in the world to arise in terms of like, let's end chattel slavery started in England. And from there, that movement spread through uh, through Europe, all the way through parts of uh, Africa, all the way down to uh, South right. America. So the rest of the world didn't need a war to end it. Um, the, the notion that uh, this was about slaves is actually, a, I would say, inaccurate. It was just something that Lincoln threw in at the very end. Hey, let's. Uh, he, we he, need more it gave people. him a moral superiority, and right. it stopped it, Britain right. from it was supporting never, the South. Right. It wasn't That's never, true. It was never about the initiation. But it was never about the, that. The 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 end. Of the matter is that it did end slavery. Uh, in terms of a new evolution. In terms of the the cotton picking thing, and then you can go into Jim Crow at, and stuff like that. At the cost that, of like tens of uh, thousands of people's lives. Oh yeah. Right. And yeah. The rest of the world didn't need those deaths to end travel slavery. No, but so would you say that you just leave it alone? No, you press forward with the more argument to abolish not just slavery, but all of it, not just travel slavery, but the kind of slavery you're, you do, you endure right now under government, right, in terms of uh, tax slavery, right? What percentage would you say then, right, if it's, a, if it's wrong and immoral to rob someone, right, 100% of their productivity, and you say that, yeah, that enslaves them, what percentage then is it not slavery when government takes up to 50% Okay, of so then the same question is for uh, corporations, what percent is it moral for them to take? I guess my question well, is, well, there, everybody... there's government everywhere in, in corporations in every place, so if you were to eliminate the government that is corporations, basically, because they're... Then, then I would be happy with that. Yeah, perfect. My, my only worry is that who's to stop them from creating themselves? Who's to stop a bunch of people from creating their own government if there's nothing to stop them? So I think, yeah, I'd like to... Are you imagining a situation where you're, you're wondering what would happen if government disappeared and nothing else changed? I guess, sort of. Okay. So, or do you think that that I or he is proposing that? I don't exactly know what you're proposing. Uh, All your 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 question was right. is government immoral? Right. So yeah. I'm just so, so yeah, I'm agreeing with you. Government yeah. is immoral, but okay, it's in some cases necessary because of right. the situation we live in right now. So that's what I guess I'm curious about that. Okay. Because I would disagree. I do not think it is necessary, and I want to know what you mean by government is necessary. If you do agree the government is immoral, yeah. it's, it's necessary, immoral in, in, necessary? In, 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 in stopping worse governments. 
in that would I would say are like corporations or things like that that would then create their own governmental systems and areas. So a bigger government stops smaller, more brutal governments. So is 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 your contention about the, the, the it, government being sorry. necessary because its immorality is necessary to stop other morality? That contention, unless I've miscategorized it, is, your, is it the case that government is the only entity that meets that condition for you? No, or could you give me other examples one. where you believe immorality is necessary? So I, I'm, I didn't quite understand your question. Can is you, government your only example of necessary immorality, or can you give me other examples of other necessary examples immorality? of necessary immorality. Uh, okay, so um, at, at the very beginning, when he was talking about, do you use, like, would you use violence on other people? Right. And I said, with no, with the caveat that if somebody was trying to harm someone else, mm -hmm. I would inflict violence on them by, like, withholding them or trying to stop them from hurting that person. That would be me con doing something immoral to that person, but to stop a greater immorality so from you, happening. So you would define any violence as immoral? Yeah. Is that, yeah. I see. Okay, so then it seems like there's a lot of just like talking past, past each other. Each other. Maybe. I, I mean, do think we agree, yeah. but I think we... Look, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just... I don't so know. So you think self-defense is immoral? Uh, and defense of others is immoral? I would say that... Uh, Hurting other people would be immoral, but if you have to yeah. hurt somebody else somewhat to stop them from hurting you, that's acceptable. So it's, so self defense is so immoral -defense but acceptable. Is immoral, but it's it's better than the alternative. Okay. Well, I would say the person the yeah. who's initiating force has already made made it known that it's okay to initiate force. Right. Right. So you're not violating his consent. Yeah. You're not doing anything immoral. Because he's making it known that violating consent is perfectly fine and justifiable. Well, he hasn't consented to he's, be. Well, he, he doesn't hurt. have to. He's making it known, known by cons violating the consent of another person in his actions. Right. Right. So he's saying it's okay to violate consent. So therefore, he cannot make, in terms like legally, this would be known like it's estoppel. You can't otherwise use that as a, as a defense because you're making it known that it's okay to hurt other people. Right. Right. So he can't use it as a defense saying that you're creating. And acting uh, and more no, I'm not saying you can right. use it as a defense. And if you're using self-defense, good for you. Well, no, congratulations to you because it's immoral. Well, it <laughs> it's the, the, you did yeah. a small immorality to yeah. to avoid a greater immorality, so which would why, be why then? Sorry, I don't. I know yeah, where you're going. Fine. Why then do, would you say that self-defense is immoral? It's it's not. It's the 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 use of violence against other people would be. But if oh, they're using okay. violence against you, I mean, you have to defend yourself. So it's it's an acceptable immorality. Yeah, my question I guess. is, why would you define it as immoral in the first place? Like, what kind of do you have some other because more basic principle I think that leads you to that? Belief? In in the dictionary, evil is defined as and maybe maybe I'm wrong about this. I never actually looked it up. I just heard it, so I may be <laughs> full of crap with this. But evil is defined as. Uh, committing acts against others that they don't want committed against them. Uh -huh. So, you know, it, there, there's also excessive self-defense mm -hmm. and things like that, but for the most part, yeah, self-defense is great. I'm all for it. Defend yourself, everybody. But, um... I don't know where I was going. Okay, so <laughs> then... Do you believe that it's a, it's a very strange position you have. I mean, I don't think I've ever heard someone quite... Say that, like, all yeah. violence is bad, but well, yeah, then, people to some are, degree, it can be acceptable. Yeah. Well, so, you're, like, you're simultaneously a, claiming to be a, uh, at least conceptually, a pacifist, but then saying that you actually support the use of violence as someone that holds a moral yeah, pacifist because, position. Because of the realities of the world, sometimes you have to use violence to stop people from hurting other people or things yeah. like that. So, yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying, I guess. Well, I think that, that's the area where I find a lot of uh, confusion with uh, violence and aggression. Yeah. Right. right. So, like, boxing is not a violent sport. That's an outlet of aggression. No, because right? both people have consented to it consented. when they enter the ring and yeah. right, right, right. 
So then that's why I always kind of go forward trying to define violence as okay. a separate term. Right. Well, let's say as, it's uh, placing a person. Some, yeah, sorry. And placing a person in an involuntary position without their consent or choice. Right. I yeah, rape, I can murder, agree theft, with that. or assault. So then, a uh, person committing violence towards someone, you're acting in self-defense. Then it's not violence. That's just you acting aggressively, defensively. Well, are are you doing something that uh, violates them still? Uh, well, not, so, and, and, and not so much. Can, My concern okay. is no longer with that person, right? My concern is now with this victim, okay, right? Who so, the initiation force. I'm not concerned about the rapist and what his thoughts are. My concern now is to end that rape that is occurring, right? right. And to protect this person to no longer being further raped. Okay, right? so then that's a good question to bring up because then you have capital punishment. Punishment. So what degree to violence are they doing? So if they're stealing something, yeah. is it okay to shoot them? So at this point, a now lot of people uh, would disagree right, right, about and that. And now at this point, now we're talking about uh, how would legal systems work in a free yeah. society, right? So one would think would be like proportional punishment in terms of. I mean, uh, well, look, no, I think I'm still talking about talking morality about, yeah. in, in that uh, if if how much violence is okay to use against how much violence in that so if I steal something right. can you shoot me a lot of people would say yes a lot of people would say right. no that's a very consensus right. Thing. and what I'm saying is that the rules though that's what plays into what what is occurring now on, on this land on this property these properties have rules and, and these rules will outline a set of uh, ways of how we will resolve violence disputes of violence if someone were to steal what, how will we uh, resolve that? For example, the Amish, they don't have anything about shooting people in the head or placing their heads in stockades. Their only thing is just uh, forgiveness and social ostracism. That's it. Every community is going to have different kinds of rules on how they deal with violence. So there might be a Thunderdome community. Two may enter, one man leaves, a uh, pillow fight, a $5 fee. It's going to be different from community to the next. So I can't tell you one so universal you're way. So you an anarcho-syndicate type? I would say a free market anarchist. Okay. Yeah. You can have an anarcho syndicalist uh, community, so to but speak. But wouldn't that there. be a form of government then? Uh, as long as it's voluntary and consensual, you could call it whatever you want to call it. Okay. Right. So then at one point, if, if you're all there and then you see in other areas people are doing terrible things because there's no overall government, like they're having child slavery and things, is it group? What I'm saying is groups, once they gain power, tend to stent, expand their ideals onto people around them. Right. throughout history so if if I create this society that I think is ethical and then I see people doing unethical things it, it's also my excuse to conquer them but it's it gives me a reason as well I don't know why right, 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 right. yeah no yeah. I think it's good I, I mean I think there might just be a slight disagreement about terminology or maybe it's deeper maybe you maybe maybe you have some I, more I do deeper think you subtle need some form of government I do think that it's necessary in order to do well, things like fight climate change, uh, fight... Uh, right, so the question yeah. is, what do you mean by government, then? But I would agree with you in the premise that government is immoral. I would right. agree with you in that. So, so then, I think we do agree in that. So then the question that... So if we do, if we do really agree yeah, on so that, we've then solved the question that. is, like, are you interested in... Because that's a lot of your questions seem to indicate that you're interested in this. Are you interested in trying to find out if there are actual implemental, implementable solutions so that we don't have to respond to immoral acts with greater immoral acts and therefore we'd be able to eliminate... Yeah, yeah that would be... And maybe as thing. technology increases, we can come up with new forms of organization that would create that or whatever. Yeah. So here's but, a question. Have okay. you ever researched that question? Have you ever sought out those solutions to see if they exist? Uh, yeah, to some degree. Like, I've read anarchists like Noam yeah. Chomsky and things mm. like that. And, I mean, he goes for the anarcho-syndicate area where small groups of people sort of control themselves and they have their own labor. And mm. I've read some of, like, Marxist theory where they say, but the problem with Marxist theory is it's based on an industrial society. And also, when it's been implemented in the modern world, it's always been through auth authoritarian uh, right. one-party the systems. Right, supposed to be against. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Uh, so we have a lot of other anarchist <laughs> authors then to uh, yeah. introduce to you. Okay. Um, in terms of uh, helping you in your breadth of, of knowledge. From, okay. Like, so you're looking from like the leftist area, right? We're non-political, so we don't we don't follow any right side or left side. Uh, for right. us, it's mostly towards uh, free market interactions, right? 
Okay. Uh, respect of self ownership beginning from there, right? This is her body, right? Yeah. Or like this is her clothes, that's her land, that's her house, that's her car, that's her money. Whereas government, on the other hand, will say the opposite. That's not your body because our rules say in terms of canvas, what you can and cannot place in there. That's not your land through eminent domain. That's not your money through because of taxes mm -hmm. and not your house because of property taxes. So trying to create this this peaceful community based on the, the duty to respect each other's self-autonomy uh, and start off from there here in Richmond outside of politics, politicians, okay. and government altogether. Yeah. And that's, that's what we're here about. It's called, okay. That's called Liberate RVA. So you want to create uh, you want to create areas of of just sort of anar like uh, sorry I'm, yeah my I'm er areas of anarchy that. yeah but I would say most we already live in a state of anarchy like we, in the first questions we we're talking about you don't use violence to solve your problems yeah. the only way government knows how to solve problems is to violating consent coercion. Right, so our, we live our lives in terms of respecting consent. This is anarchy right here. Uh, so the most part, we just want to draw what uh, connects us all together with the, the values that we already share and go forth in a, in a real direction, funda okay. funda foundation of peace, opposite of uh, trying to think we can get it through government, which has never worked time and time again. Okay, I yeah okay, I'll yeah I, I yeah. I mean, I can bring up small things, but yeah. I, I think you're talking generally, and I would agree with you. And there, there will be problems. We're not ascribing to the yeah. utopia. One third of your problems. I'm that... sorry to take up no, so no, much No, 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 no. This is, this is beautiful. I feel like I'm hogged. <laughs> no, it's a great question, because your questions yeah. are all, well, how would I, like I said, they fit into two categories. How would I avoid the things I want to avoid without the yeah. government, and how would I pursue the things I want to pursue without the government? Right. And those are great questions. And there's, like, reams of literature written on this with on lots and lots and lots of that. ideas, okay. right? But I think, you know... You're only, I think a human beings only be willing to really uh, seriously pursue those ideas if they're first committed to pursuing them. For, committed to the stance that government is something we want to get, get away from, move away from, right. and I'm going to go find better ways. Okay. You know, and I think, you know, agreeing to like, hey, let's find better ways, let's do research, let's improve our minds, let's mm -hmm. analyze history and maybe even have, a, you know, really good conversation, a disagreement right. about what happened in history that's wonderful some of what you all are okay. doing but you know yeah if you're doing that to try to get you know to try to you know, entrench yourself into this claim that you know we, we definitely do need the government then you're just no, then you're I, just arguing I don't think we definitely do you know, need the two, government two people against each other it's just people, yeah. when people say government is immoral often they're arguing from like the the tea party side of thing, right, and right, then right, they're right, trying right. to create yeah. a reason for then right. uh, corporations to Deregulate and then create more mm -hmm. money for themselves. And, and you finally grip that uh, that does not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fine, uh, yeah. My claim is just that violence against peaceful persons is immoral. Yeah. Correct. No, I agree. And government does violence no, against so peaceful persons. No, so I think we fundamentally so agree. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I I think we agree. Okay. Cool. Uh, then we should uh, meet up more often. Then. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. you can ask those questions, but sure. also from a from from the knowledge of like. We probably do agree. We probably both would like to see something right. better, you know. And then you can move toward maybe you know reading some more books about ideas that you haven't okay. thought of. So I'd love to yeah. read up more because yeah. as as I see it now, I don't see any way w it, how the world is. Yeah. Just because probably I, maybe I don't know enough, but I don't see any way that you would end climate change and all these things without yes. the government. There's a really in our modern day society. Right. One of the books that really kind of. I was this last hang up I had and I was like I kind of had a similar position to yours which was just like I don't really know how we could really do better than what we have right now I'm a little bit afraid I mean I think we can do better yeah you know I was like I didn't know but there's a there's a pretty good book that's really digestible it kind of starts in the beginning and goes through and covers everything that you brought up here in this conversation it's called For a New Liberty by Murray Rothbard that I really recommend and he does come from like he came from like kind of like libertarian pro-government um, stance and then became kind of blossomed into this anarchist kind of on economic principles. So he makes a, he, he's making the arguments from the point of view of like a strictly free market, like an actual free market with no government. Oh, you know, okay. How would you solve all these problems? And he just gives he just gives some like basic ideas of like you might do it this way. And just they seem so reasonable. You're like yeah maybe you might um, that it can at least maybe like open your mind to the possibility that it, that there might be solutions. Right. Um, you know, and, and there's, there's just so many, though. There's so many different writers and different thinkers that have tackled this problem that I think, given the stance you hold toward the morality of government, yeah. that you should look into. Okay, so yeah. 
the book was... Um, it's called For a New Liberty. Okay. By I'll, Murray Rothbard. I'll see if I can get yeah, that. Definitely email me. And I'll send you some more info. We yeah. do monthly meetings, too, though. Okay. Uh, so we do, like, monthly freedom yeah. gatherings. We All right. address a lot of different topics and yeah. questions. Sorry, sorry to no, no, take no, up no, so no, much no. time we, and everything. We do this for fun, so... Yeah. <laughs> okay. That book's also, available for free online, too, so you can find it. All right. For a New Liberty... Rothbard. Okay. Rothbard. 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 I'm Cal. All right, I'm Jonah. Jonah. Nice to Pleasure. meet you. Pleasure. Tiger. Nice to meet you. Jonah. Uh, nice let's do this again. Are okay. you a student here? Uh, yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, me too. So next year semester, you'll probably see a lot of, of me here. We also have like a Liberate Club here, so there's a lot of activities. Okay. We do a lot of uh, analysis on like economics and history as well. So. Okay. We'll, we'll come across a lot of those questions. All right. Well, well thanks. <laughs> thanks for debating me. Yeah, of course. Of course. That like was that. fun. <laughs> Sorry if I. No, 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 no. <laughs> no Let okay. me get your email though, just in case. Oh, yeah. Left behind. The dollar signs rule. But what about the fool who falls victim to the material world? 